What makes Aka Akasaka's writing so interesting is the fact that you can tell this man loves Japanese folklore and somehow finds a way to include it in his stories whether it be a- But underneath the surface, the real strength in this series is Aka Akasaka's ability to write sympathetic characters. Behind the fame and glamour are real people. People that have to live in this world of deception. People who have to deal with the pressures of being constantly judged not only by their audience but the industry they work in. Now, there's a lot of hype around this show right now and it's honestly so, so deserved. Oshinoko, along with Hell's Paradise, are the frontrunners of the most anticipated new anime of this spring 2023 season, but man, I, I think Oshinoko just exploded as the easy frontrunner. Oh, Stan! <laughs> I'm a stunner! Found you. I'm coming. Hey. <laughs> there he is. There my old buddy bud bud. <laughs> What's with him? He made a bunch of really bad reviews and then said he wanted to talk about Oshi no Ko, so I wrote a bunch of hate comments to try and discourage him. <laughs> but he still wouldn't shut up, so tag, you're it! <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> The story of Oshi no Ko begins with our main protagonist, whose name we do not even learn until a good while into the first episode, watching the poster girl performing on live TV. This is Goro Amamiya, a 30-something year old doctor and a resident idol otaku, his favorite one being Ai Hoshino, a 16-year-old rising star in the industry. He's told off by one of the nurses and they move their conversation out of the room. On the rooftop, Goro explains that his love for Ai comes from Serena, an old patient of his who was an unfortunate little girl with a terminal illness. During their time together, she would often talk about Ai, rambling endlessly about how much of a big fan she was and how she wished she could be just like her one day. That was how most of their conversations went until the day of her eventual passing. So now he watches Ai's career as a way to remember Serena, or so he claims. Now already, this is giving off all kinds of red flags that are making me increasingly uncomfortable. Look, I don't mean to try and judge anyone who's into this cutesy idol crap or whatever. I think it's completely fine to respect and admire public figures to a certain extent. I might myself have a few musical artists and content creators that I'm a really big fan of, so I'd be nothing but a hypocrite if I started moral grandstanding about this. That being said though, I'd be lying if I said I didn't find this whole entire setup to be just a teensy bit creepy. Goro has a very weird obsession with Ai, a girl who's younger than him by more than a decade. It would be completely fine if it was genuinely just him having a sort of fondness for her that an older person would have for someone younger, like let's say their daughter for example, but it becomes pretty obvious that his affection for her is far from just innocent appreciation for her music. The show obviously plays this off for laughs, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's pretty gross. <laughs> Also, yes, I'm well aware that saying all this is probably going to get me crucified by Lollicon Twitter because apparently pointing out that a 30 year old man wanting to fuck a teenager being creepy is completely unacceptable. Don't you know it's animated, you filthy tourist? So it's completely fine that this 30 year old plus man wants to fuck a 16 year old girl. Now, where's my Kana body pillow that I'm totally not attracted to? Later that day, much to Goro's absolute shock, his idol Ai Hoshino ends up paying a visit to his hospital with a very clearly pregnant belly. There's a bit of back and forth on whether or not Ai should keep the baby or not, but she ultimately decides to give birth, with Goro acting as her personal doctor throughout the process. It's here that we really start to get a look at Ai as a character, and we quickly learn that she's far from the innocent, pure-hearted idol that she portrays herself as. In fact, she herself claims to be a very selfish person who puts up an act for the sake of her own self-interest. While it is implied that she does indeed care and love for her fans to a certain extent, the persona she puts on the stage is nothing but fake at the end of the day. 
and she is well aware of the fact that she's exploiting people's feelings in a way, which initially made her pretty intriguing to me. That being said though, despite the fact that I do think she's a pretty okay character, I still think she's extremely overrated, and if I'm being completely honest, I have some slight resentment towards her because there was a time when she would just be plastered all over my Instagram feed every single goddamn time I opened the app. She's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but she's far from the deepest character to ever exist. This show definitely falls into a category I like to call pretentious waifu anime, which is something I've actually brought up before, but it's basically just a series that solely revolves around the girl on the front cover. Other shows that can be classified under this umbrella are Bunny Girl Senpai, Haruhi Suzumiya, and Your Lie in April, where every single thing that happens in the story will always ultimately go back to the super peppy kawaii girl with a super complex personality, and the connection will always 90% of the time be about how oh so awesome she is, and I hate it. I'm not against characters being put on a pedestal as long as there's a good reason for it, such as them being old and experienced, or maybe the strongest fighter to have ever lived or some shit. Unfortunately, I is just a teenage girl who sings and acts pretty good. I really just can't help but roll my eyes every time another character just goes on and on about how great she was, like she was God's gift to the earth or something. I digress though. The night I is about to give birth, a stalker manages to track down the hospital that she's staying in. Luckily, he's not able to get anywhere near her, but he ends up murdering Goro in the process by pushing him down a cliff. Just when it looks like it's about to be lights out for him, some supernatural bullshit happens and Goro ends up being reincarnated as one of Ai's newly born children, having woken up as the male twin named Aqua. This was pretty much the point where I was close to completely clocking out. The rest of the first episode spends a good majority of the runtime just showing Aqua being introduced to what goes on behind the scenes of Japanese television, and it's honestly just really, really boring. Maybe it's just because I'm a grumpy and cynical old man, but I really did not find this anime anime insightful or interesting in any sort of way. A lot of the things they show about television production and all this producer crap is such surface level bullshit that it's not really even all that interesting. Oh, a lot of directors aren't given a lot of sufficient budgets for their projects. I already fucking knew that. You're not clever, you pretentious dipshit. Additionally, and I admit that this is probably just a me problem, but I was not in the least bit touched by the story involving Akane. A bunch of people said that this arc was super deep and insightful and all that crap and I really don't understand why. Maybe it's because of the fact that I spent a good portion of my middle and high school years frequenting forums like 4chan and Kiwi Farms, so the idea of abhorrent, disgusting individuals existing on the internet has become such an obvious thing that whenever someone tries to dramatically point it out, I can't help but just go, Hey, look at that! Look at that! No shit! That being said, if I'm to be completely transparent, it really wouldn't have mattered how good that arc was. Don't get me wrong, it was mediocre as hell, but it could have been the greatest piece of media ever to be put on television, and it really wouldn't have meant anything to me. And that's mainly because my interest for the story was already thoroughly destroyed by the end of the pilot episode. After making me sit through an entire hour of empty, meaningless moe bullshit, the show decided that it needed to up the ante. So after a few years had passed, when I had been scheduled to perform the biggest show of her life, the stalker that killed Goro shows up at her doorstep and shanks her to death. <laughs> However, because Aqua's a nearly 40-year-old man inside a kid's body, he's able to piece together his father, aka Ai's baby daddy, most likely leaked her location to the stalker which caused her death. This realization sets him on a warpath to find the father so that he can take revenge for Ai, and this was also the moment where I just gave up on liking the show. Yeah, that's right, my biggest issue with the show is not the pretentious execution of the plot, but it's mainly the protagonist of the story itself. This is probably going to get me a lot of heat, but this show has a lot of really creepy undertones that just really pissed me off more than anything. There's two instances that really got under my skin and really just soured the entire series for me. So I'll start with the more trivial one. First off, after waking up one random night, Aqua discovers that his twin sister Ruby is also a reincarnate when he catches her arguing with trolls on the internet. And unlike Aqua, who at least tries to not be a complete godforsaken creep, Ruby indulges herself entirely in the close contact she has with Ai. Now technically this isn't too bad from the perspective of the viewers, since we learn pretty quickly that Ruby is actually Aqua's dead patient from his previous life. However, she tells Aqua that she was a grown woman before she died. So from his perspective, his fellow reincarnate is a grown-ass woman who is an obsessive fan relishing in that she can suck on the tits of a teenager. I'm not the one putting emphasis on set action, by the way. They had a whole last scene where she was looking all smug while doing it. They knew full well how creepy this came off and just played it off for laughs. Aside from that, there's the issue with Aqua. 
I already mentioned how I found it pretty damn gross how infatuated he was with Ai when he was an adult and him getting reincarnated as her son just made it even more fucking disgusting, honestly. Like, do I really have to point out the irony happening right in front of you? This show does so much pretentious moral fagging about how stalkers are scum and obsessive fans are creepy, yet Aqua, who is a creepy and perverted fan of Ai, is rewarded with the chance to be in close proximity to her. Not to mention, I don't understand the need for this whole reincarnation bullshit in the first place. In my honest, not at all humble opinion, I believe Goro himself should have never existed, and Aqua should have been just a regular teenage boy with his own personality instead of inserting a 30 plus year old man inside him. Seriously take a second to think about it, wouldn't it have been more interesting if the show was about Ai's actual damn son? A tale of a guy searching for his mother's killer while at the same time discovering just how dark and grim her profession actually was. I don't know about you, but that simple change sounds 10 times more interesting and less disturbing than EDP reincarnating as Billie Eilish's son. Plus, this would have made Aqua's obsession much more understandable since there'd be an actual family connection involved. The fact that he loses his damn mind and goes on this crusade to find Ice Killer is not as effective in the show because I know it's a 30 plus year old man in there. I get being upset, but why to this extent? It's not like she was his actual mother. This just made him come off almost as creepy and pathetic as the stalker and honestly, I just couldn't vibe with that. Oh great, another filthy tourist SJW trying to soil our precious anime. Why don't you just fuck off mate? It's just that good old Japanese culture. Look man, it really is not that deep. I've been watching anime since I was a fucking toddler so I know pretty damn well that this kind of creepy bullshit has been a part of it for literal years. I'm not trying to push for change or push some kind of political agenda, I'm just here to give my opinion on a popular show. So if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. Don't go preaching on me, alright? I really don't need a 10 paragraph essay about how getting turned on by drawings depicting children is somehow totally fine and you freaks aren't creepy and disgusting. Honestly, I don't know why I'm preemptively saying this. You Oshinoko fans are clearly very sane and put together individuals, am I right? No one asked you to tell where you belongs to go and study biology, you dictator weirdo. How are you this disgusting? Incest is not wrong from any genetic standpoint. It is inbreeding, which is wrong. And I am totally against inbreeding. Unless, of course, they have millions of dollars to spend on genome editing. So question comes why it is wrong. Because in a person's DNA, in simple words, Akuru be getting married, touching, kissing each other, having protected sex with contraceptives, or having unprotected sex but taking anti-pregnancy pills afterwards, none of these is inbreeding, and hence it is totally correct from a genetic standpoint. This is why your parents change the subject when people ask about you. Overall, Oshinoko was a complete and utter disappointment and I will never trust Aka Akasaka ever again. Lastly, if you're a fan of this show, I must politely ask that you keep a minimum distance of 30 feet away from me as I don't want to run the risk of passing out from your repulsive body odor. Thanks for watching.